Today on the podcast, I want to talk about a really interesting new company, which is specifically trying to help defend you against deep fakes and, you know, detect fake AI generated images, videos, all that kind of stuff. This is Reality Defender. They actually just raised $15 million with the sole purpose of detecting text, video and image deep fakes. I think this is a really interesting space. And uh, I believe that OpenAI is actually currently working on, you know, dropping a new AI image, like essentially AI image detector. Now, it's going to be interesting because, of course, OpenAI is the same company that earlier this year dropped an AI text detector and discontinued the service after a handful of months because, I don't know, it was too hard or maybe they're revamping it or something. It was pretty much just giving a bunch of false positives. And, uh, you know, if they had teachers that are banning the use of AI and then they use, you know, OpenAI, which sounds like the most official tool and it gives false positives or false negatives, like it's, you know, not a very good look. And, you know, you'd feel bad for students that wrote their essay and got called out as AI when it wasn't actually. So because of that, I believe OpenAI canceled it, but it left a lot of people asking, is this even possible? Like, can we even do this? And so, yeah, there's been a bunch of other companies that have come into the space. And I've actually seen a handful that are fairly good at the text side of things. It's always a cat and mouse game, though, because there's always techniques you can use to get around that. So in any case, today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about uh, Reality Defender, what they're doing, how they're different, what they're going to be spending this $15 million on, and the implications for the industry. So let's dive into it. Welcome to the world's number one AI podcast, AI Chat. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Make sure that you go to AIbox.ai, link in the show notes, to join the waitlist for our new AI platform. We're going to be launching an incredible platform that allows you to build anything you want with workflows um, in AI. So you're able to chain together chat GPT and image generators and audio generators to make really powerful apps for your organization, or you can host them on our marketplace and actually generate royalties from them. So make sure to go to AIbox.ai and join the waitlist for in addition, if you like the podcast, if you could do me a massive favor and please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps me be able to get better guests on here as they check the reviews to see how you guys are liking it. So if you could please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested Interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Like I mentioned, Reality Defender has just raised a successful Series A funding round with $15 million. Um, and I think this was spearheaded by DCVC. They had a bunch of notable contributions from, uh, I think, like Comcast, um, EXANTE, uh, Parameter Ventures, Nat Friedman's AI Grant. And I think with this whole infusion of capital that they have, Reality Defender is set to double its team of 23 dedicated experts. So, you know, just doubling their workforce pretty much is their main investment. And their primary objective is to enhance their AI-based content directive direction models. So according to Ben Coleman, the company's co-founder and CEO, um, the new method, he says, quote, new methods of deep faking and content generation will consistently appear, taking the world by surprise both through spectacles and um, the amount of damage they can cause. So in co- in the you know in the context of this kind of financial backing, Coleman um, expressed a forward-looking vision for Defender Reality, and he said, quote, by adopting a research-forward mindset, Reality Defender can stay several steps ahead of these new generation methods and models before they appear publicly, being proactive about detection instead of reacting to what just happened or just what just appeared today. So I think this is interesting because, um, of course, the, like I mentioned, there's a cat and mouse game going on even for the tech stuff. So I'm sure the video and image and everything else is like even more intense. But that being said, their claim here is that they're anticipating where the tech is going. They're anticipating what's coming next and they're building tools that can detect and stop it like before it launches. That's a really bold claim. Like that is a freaking bold claim. Like OpenAI struggled detecting AI generated content from their own tool like a year after this came out or more, right? Um, you know, you had 
Uh, you had DaVinci, which was a precursor to GPT-3. And then, of course, we have GPT-4. And like OpenAI couldn't detect any of it. So, And it was over a, a handful of years that the stuff rolled out, a, a year or two. So, yeah, I don't know. That's a really bold claim, especially when it's like they're like, we're going to detect video stuff coming out. And I've talked about this on a couple podcast episodes and interviews before. But essentially, I saw a really interesting clip uh, or I was listening to an interesting podcast and they were talking about the fact um, I'll give credit. It was the Ice Coffee Hour. Graham Stephan and Jack Shelby were interviewing Ty Lopez, and Ty was talking about the fact that it's one thing to use a deep fake of a person, you know, saying like there's a bunch of famous just recently, Mr. Beast got deep faked, and he was like saying, "Hey, you need to go buy this product. It's awesome or whatever." But it's a deep fake. And when I watched the video, I'm like, "Yeah, there's no way I would like see that video and be like, oh, Mr. Beast is legitimately endorsing whatever." Like you could just tell it's a deep fake. But what Ty was saying was uh, extra tricky, and I tend to agree with after watching like the videos, is there's been a number of videos where essentially they will use a real clip of a real celebrity like Joe Rogan talking about a sports supplement or something, um, and right before he mentions the name of the supplement, they swap it for their own product. And uh, and they just all they have to do is deep fake the word of their own product, and otherwise, it, and it's really, really hard to detect. Like watching it, it was like, no, he just literally endorsed this product. And so people use that and run it as an ad. And I think that's kind of the next level of deep faking is it's like a literal real video that maybe you even watched that podcast episode and you were like, you're like, ah, oh, shoot, what was the, you know, the, the workout pre, like the pre-workout that Joe Rogan recommended and you like search it on YouTube and someone like SEO'd their clip to the top and it's like Joe Rogan thing and you like watch it and it's literally the clip you remember except the name is different, but you probably don't remember because it was a couple weeks ago. So you're like, okay, cool. You go buy that one. Like, it's really, really interesting. So, in any case, they're claiming that their the reality defender is claiming they're going to catch this stuff ahead of time. I'm a very skeptical. Very, very skeptical. But I would love to be proven wrong. It's a cool company, cool tech. So, I mean, I'm all for it. In any case, in the context of all of this, um, I think Reality Defender originated as a nonprofit initiative when they first started out, but they really quickly, I think they pivoted towards external financing as, you know, they essentially recognized the growing scale of the deep fake problem, kind of like open AI, right? They were a nonprofit, uh, open source kind of thing. And then they went for profit. Now, I don't know this, this one I, I definitely see as like, yeah, you definitely kind of need money to do this deep fake detection. It's expensive if open AI is struggling to do it. Like you could need a lot of money. Um, Deep Media, which is a competitor in the synthetic media detection space, estimates that the number of video deepfakes has tripled and voice deepfakes have increased eightfold just over the last year. Honestly, I don't know if that's true or not. I really don't care. With something like Eleven Labs launching, where essentially with a couple minutes of audio of any person, you can deepfake their voice. Like in one year or more, it's going to be like a thousand X spammers, scammers, all this kind of stuff. So like, I don't really care when they're like, it's up 8x i'm like yeah big big deal whatever like two weeks ago a month ago whatever massive tools that anyone can use are coming out that is just gonna like put that on steroids so i mean yeah cool at 8x but i think we're gonna see like a thousand x over the next year so the surge i think in kind of deep fake production can be attributed to the growing accessibility of a lot of these generative ai tools like i mentioned in the past cloning voices or like creating deep fake images or videos was really like Here's the thing. It was just really expensive. Uh, it wasn't that you couldn't do it. It was just very expensive. It had, you know, you needed a considerable kind of data science expertise. And so now in recent years, of course, all this new technology, stable diffusion, 11 labs, all the rest of it, I'm um, having made this like there's no barrier to entry. Anyone could do it. It's super easy. So to illustrate this, I think there have been some instances where platforms like 11 labs were used to replicate celebrities voices. And then they were generating audio content ranging from memes to um, you know, s some people stay saying stuff that aligned with the Chinese Communist Party and uh, I don't know, whatever, a bunch of stuff that uh, it's going to happen because here's the thing, like they can say, OK, you can't use a celebrity's voice. And on Eleven Labs, when you upload a clip, it's like I, you know, say I have copyright for this, but like you could just grab a clip of anyone talking and anyone can do it. And it's going to be really hard. And if Eleven Labs doesn't do it, it's going to be 100 open source models that do the same thing. So I don't think there's a way to really stop this, to be honest. Um, and maybe detection's our best bet. I don't know. But although some generative AI platforms have implemented filters and restrictions to combat misuse, I think it remains definitely a constant challenge. Um, Coleman here, he, their CEO said, quote, 
Some of the greatest risks from AI-generated media stems from use and abuse of deepfakes material on social media. I think in this context, Reality Defender is this is kind of where they're coming in and they're claiming the ability to detect various deep fakes and AI generated media. They offer an API and web application capable of analyzing video, audio, text, and images for signs of AI driven alter like alterations, which I think is very interesting. And it like technically something like that might be able to catch um, you know, a Joe Rogan deep fake or most of it's right, but there's like some altercation that comes in and kind of changes it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be interesting. The question I think still remains, like, can any tool really reliably detect deep fakes? OpenAI, of course, has struggled with this. So I think there's a concern that deep fake detection models may inadvertently, um, perpetuate like a bunch of issues. So some research from the University of Southern Carolina or Southern California highlighted, um, this is what they said. They said that there's some biases within some training data sets, which can be amplified in detection systems leading to disparities in error rates based on racial or gender gender attributes. This is a really interesting concept or study, but essentially University of Southern California is saying that um that deep fake detection models are have biases and that those will cause us harm, which is just like a very interesting I would I would love to see like what they ex, ex, expressly like say about that. Like, I understand you put some bad data into an AI model, it spits out something like racist. Yeah, that's bad, right? So obviously OpenAI is, works pretty heavily to avoid that from happening. Now we're saying that like deepfake detection models could inver- inadvertently have like biases for race or gender or like other things. And I, I think they're like biases as they're saying like probably it's going to have more false positives or false negatives if you're um, you know, a woman or black or like other things or maybe white or I don't know. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't feel like this is a big problem we have right now. There's not a lot of really good uh, deep fake detection software out there. This isn't a very mainstream topic. There's a bunch of people that are coming up with this. So I personally tend to, and also like if the University of Southern California is doing this research, they're like, it's like, what tool are you using? OpenAI isn't being successful. So like you're not using them. Uh, of course we got reality defender here, just raised $15 million, but like, this is very early age stuff or like early stage stuff. Um, anyways, it's just funny. If, if you go online and you look at people talking about like pros and cons of this stuff, I just, I think it's got a lot of pros when I see cons like this, like it's like deep fake detection software could be racist. I'm like, I don't know. I don't buy it quite yet. I mean, if this thing's mainstream and a lot of like millions of people are using it and it has like some sort of major error, I think we'll all know and everyone's going to talk about it. But like when you start talking about problems in software that isn't even, that doesn't even work, like in my opinion, most of this stuff doesn't work very well. I don't know. I, I just think it's a little far-fetched. In any case, in any case, um, regardless of all the skepticism that some people throw their way, Reality Defender has established a really strong foothold in the market. They serve a, a big clientele, including governments spanning multiple continents, top tier financial institutions, media corporations, uh, multinational corporations. I think they got a lot of impressive clients. I would be curious to see like what their accuracy rate is on deep fakes and what the cat and mouse game of like people um, doctoring stuff and them actually being able to detect it. I So I will, I'll put this out here, okay? Um, and I can be skeptical of all sides of the argument on this. You'll see me give my hot takes or whatever. But I really, really do think this is an incredibly important arena um, because uh, there, there's a couple of issues. The number one concern I have with like AI generated content is going to be faked um, evidence in trials, legal trials. So you're going to get accused of something and someone's going to get accused of something. Then they're going to say, here's a video of you literally doing the thing. And so I think it's important that we have really robust. I think we need to put a lot of money into this whole space of um, AI detection because like how horrible would that be to like submit some evidence to a jury the jury watches it and like they just pretty much are like yeah you're guilty boom so like if the ai detector cannot detect if we don't have good enough ai detection um people are 100 percent going to get accused of stuff and go to jail like and you know i don't know a lot of people complain from all sides of the aisle in America about the weaponization of the legal system in the U.S. I think that's probably a, an issue a lot of people complain about and don't want to see whether, I guess, whether you believe it's happening or not, too, is irrelevant to the fact that you don't want it to happen. I think we can all agree we don't want the justice system to be weaponized. And I think 
um, AI is going to just cause havoc in this area. So we definitely want really robust tools that can detect this. So we do not end up in this situation. And it's not even just like weaponization politically, like someone, you know, has a grudge against their ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend for doing X, Y, and Z things. So now they're going to set them up and make them pay. And they're going to show this video of them being abused and send them to jail for a year. Like there's just some, it, it could get messy. So I think this is important. Um, as Coleman said recently, he said, Reality Defender uses AI to fight AI, helping the largest entities, platforms, and governments determine whether a piece of media is likely real or likely manipulated. In doing so, they are making significant strides in combating fraud, disinformation, and the spread of harmful materials across various sectors. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. I think this is an important topic and definitely one that I'll continue to follow into the future. Thanks for joining me for my hot takes on AI detection today. I'll keep you updated on the story. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.